Welcome to Art Starts Explores. I'm Kay, and I work at Art Starts as a gallery coordinator and preparator. I started the Art Starts Explores program three years ago, and I'm excited to bring a version online that can be enjoyed by families across the province. Today we're going to explore the theme of framing, which for visual artists, especially cinematographers, the people who plan and craft the shots you see in movies, helps to set up a scene or picture. It can provide mood like tension or make you feel nervous for the main characters, and it can help tell the audience where to look or what they should focus on. If you've never joined us for Explorers in the past, I want to take a quick moment to tell you about the three rules or guidelines we like to follow. First is respect. We practice respect for ourselves by listening to how we feel, respect for others by listening and sharing, respect for the land by acknowledging the nations and indigenous people who have served and continue to serve as guardians and stewards of the land, and by doing our best to be respectful guests as we learn and play here. Second is no expectations. Try not to plan too much before trying something today. If we get a picture on our heads about how something should turn out, we can be disappointed with ourselves when it doesn't. Try practicing surprise and always ask yourself, I wonder what will happen if I... Third is that nothing is for keeps. In the gallery in Vancouver, we like to say, take nothing home with you except your experience. But since many of you are at home now, we challenge you to unmake everything you try today. This means after you finish trying something, Try to disassemble or take it apart so you can use it again for something else. Try not to make any completed thing, and whenever possible, pull from your recycling bin to practice. And if it can still be recycled when you're done, put it back. Trying something new doesn't need to make something for keeps, and that's just what we're practicing today. Okay, on with our exploration. I'm going to make a few different versions here of something called a viewfinder. I've collected the following things. String, or floss if you don't have any string. You can also use twine. Tape if you have some. Scissors or a knife for parents, guardians, and teachers who are working with you. A ruler or straight edge. A straight edge is something that is straight and strong enough. If you cut along it, it won't be damaged. And finally, some cardboard or construction paper. Anything you can safely cut through, but I suggest at least something as heavy as construction paper so it isn't too flimsy. With all our tools assembled, I'm going to get started with a plain black one. I'm an adult, so I'm going to use my utility knife to make a fast viewfinder out of some heavy duty cardboard. If you don't have access or feel comfortable using a utility knife, parents too, utility knives are sharp and dangerous. Use scissors. It doesn't have to be perfect. It just has to be big enough around the edges so you can hold it in your hand and make a big enough screen or cutout that you can see through it. If you're making a few of these, try different cutout sizes. That's the great thing about using recycling. You can make a whole bunch of these. By using cereal box, or in this case, cola box, I can easily fold over the cardboard to make my cut. You can use either side, and if you want, you can take a marker and color it in. Try coloring different viewfinders and see if that makes a difference. Can't fold the cardboard? That's okay. We'll cut out one in four pieces and just tape it together. This method does require tape, so if you don't have any around, try out the other ways. Or try it a different way. Can you make a viewfinder out of four separate shapes and no tape? Why not? Try it out. Now I'm going to add string to two of my viewfinders. This will make a grid. Try adding string to one of your viewfinders and leaving the other one empty. See if it makes a difference. I like using string because it means I can try and level the things I see on the other side. If you're learning fractions or division at school, the grid helps me divide up my space into even sections and try to make it so my framing is balanced. Okay, viewfinder's done. Make sure everyone in your family or group has a viewfinder for themselves. Take a second to look through each other's viewfinder. What do you notice? Do you notice anything different when you look through the different viewfinders? Try asking a parent, sibling, or guardian to sit on the other side of your viewfinder. What else do you notice? Let's take a walk. Look through your viewfinder, but walk slowly and stay away from any stairs or ramps so you don't trip or roll out of control. You can also stay in place and rotate around if you ask someone else to hold the viewfinder as you move. Try lining things up so that they are even on both sides. 
Consider getting up close to things and seeing how looking through the viewfinder makes it look different. What happens if you set up a scene and approach it with your viewfinder? I said that earlier, framing can be used to set a mood. You can do this next part with your family or other kids in your home or classroom by asking them to sit in a chair and then putting objects around them. If you moved in big pillows or lamps, how does it change the picture you see through your viewfinder? Later, when you're not playing or exploring with your family or friends, you can do this alone with your toys. Set up a scene. Place one toy in the center of the room and then put objects around it. How does the picture you see through your viewfinder change when you look through? There are lots of ways you can explore framing, and I've just suggested a few. Be sure to download our resource one page this week for additional questions you can ask each other, as well as some words you can use to challenge yourself when you're done setting up new scenes. And don't forget, when you're all done playing and exploring, try to take things apart and put them away again so that the only thing that is left behind are the pictures in your brain. Thank you so much for watching this video today. If you have any suggestions, please let me know. If you're watching this in April 2020, we'll be hosting a live art making session on framing this weekend where you can make at home and ask questions or watch me practice too. Check us out on Facebook or Instagram at Artstarts. I hope to see you then. Bye.